Okay. Hi, Mom. All right. This is the only blank canvas I have left, so it's an 8x10, I think. And it's pretty small. I don't even know what I'm going to make. But I, here's the paint bottles that I use. This one I got at Michael's. Um, but they come with these little red caps, and sometimes they come attached to a little plastic arm like this. And you just cut that off. Um, but anyway, so I put my paint on like this around the edges and then I just do this and then well this is a big one um oh this is a good size so I bought these three packs of paint spatulas in these three sizes and um don't use the edge that has the the groove or the slant on it. For some reason, it makes the edges drag. Um, keep a wet rag with you because you have to wipe between swipes when you're doing the actual paint. So I just go along like this and scoot it to the edges. It doesn't have to be a thick coat. And I have some dry paint on here that's spreading. That's okay. It's going to get covered. Oops. And then I just take the paint off and cover the edges and, and go back and do those anyway. Now the girl, that Sandra Lillette girl that I watch, um, and her squirt bottles, she uses treadmill oil and drops or coconut milk hair um, serum. I have not tried that, but she uses one to two drops in her bottles per ounce of mixed paint. I didn't do that initially, so I just keep adding paint to these bottles um, when they run low, so you'll end up with a bunch of bottles, so you're not cleaning bottles out all the time. But I can't find my silicone. But anyway, I would typically, before I start, spray silicone into a couple squirts into my bottles before I start. So here's my white. I don't have silicone in the white either, um, but I have this turquoise, this blue, and then the very last of my bright gold. I don't know if you can see that. I, um, I don't even know what to make. So for my tree and my octopus, I used, I drew the outline with the white. My other stuff I used my colors first and then I edged it with white and swiped but it was easier to come out with an actual shape by drawing it with with the white first. Um, this is pretty small so um, what to make. Oh while well, I'm thinking about that. So this is the one I used for the tree. Um, because there was such a small space between the branches and I wanted it to go. So I went, started with the white that had the color next to it first and swiped over. And then I went back and swiped the other white edge over top of that. So this is a good spatula to use. I like this one a lot because I use this edge a lot because it's a little bit 
Well, it's actually the same size as this, but this edge, if you're doing small stuff. And then this spatula is good too, sometimes. Um, so I guess, um, gosh, I don't even know. Let's just make a shape. Um, so normally, I would use my color first, so we can start here. And then go with the gold. Then the turquoise. And then maybe we want to branch out here. like that or something. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking, sorry. So the white line is going to go on the opposite side of the dark blue. So you got to think about that and the, which way you're going to swipe. So if you start with the white first outlining, it might be easier to know since this is just a random shape. It doesn't really matter. Oops. Then use your white. And you can put that on a little bit thicker. You want to make sure it's enough to give a good swipe over the paint. Okay. So I think this one might be too big. Um, so I'll use this one. So again, don't use the edge with the slant on it. Use the smooth one. And this is where you'll want to wipe it off real good in between swipes. So I like to start from right to left. So there's a couple ways you can swipe over and across or you can go over and down What's cool about that is you can add a tad more white, like right here, and use this to come down on your small section. This will dry really cool. It'll level out, so you don't have to do anything with that, but it bothers me sometimes. I'm afraid if I don't add more white, it will bring the more black through. Ah, what did it anyway? Got to be a little flat with it. There we go.
And then just any dots that get on there that I don't want, I just dab them. Okay. So with this spatula, you can do the same thing. And if you just go up and over, you kind of get that tubular shape, which is super cool. I really like that. And if there's a spot you don't like, then you can just go over it. And sometimes these little lines and stuff are cool, but... your rag over. I hope I don't bump the camera. And I might. I have to come around the other way. And go right handed. This one that would be cool to connect to these two by doing that or something. So then if you're like, oh, I like it, but it needs more, then you can just, um, trying to think of where I can, hmm. let's see. give it somewhat of a 3D effect because when it dries, the black actually helps to give dimension. I just love the black background more than anything. I, I've done the white, I've done turquoise, I've done purple, but the black just makes everything stand out. Um, and I really like using the metallic paints in this because they're a little heavier and so they um, when they settle, they just look really cool. So, I'm going to go. I'm just going to go for it and do that. Yikes. What did I do? This. I'm thinking I... You can put the colors on top of each other. It really doesn't matter because it's going to, they're going to mix. And 
And just always important to keep your little red caps on these things because it sucks when it gets a clog in it and then you're trying to get it out and then it comes out and then paint squirts everywhere. It's not fun. So when this dries, you're gonna tell, you're gonna be able to tell that this is in the front, which I like that aspect of this technique. Uh, it before I screw it up so what's good about this is it dries overnight I did the tree last night it's dry today um, they say give it like four or five days for it to completely cure but it's dry to the touch the next day um, that's when you know you use the right amount of paint um, sometimes argh. like these areas here see i want to leave that open when that dries it's going to look like a tube like it's hollow and you can look inside so this will level out and the black will give it definition and it'll make it have that 3d effect so anyway this i guess is just a video on technique of the tubular shape when i get a bigger canvas I have some that are like mess ups that I can redo over. I'll do another one with a shape, like the tree or something. I just don't have enough room on this to do the tree. But as far as the edges go, I mean, they're on there like that. You can leave them, but they're not blended. So I typically just wipe them off and then I go back with black and just make sure all the edges are black. And you don't have to do that right away. So, yeah, wherever it spills over, just wipe that off before it dries. Or if you want to take a little spatula and blend those colors on the edge where it spills over, I mean, that'd be cool too. Um, but I just pour. A little black onto the table. Make sure my hands are clean of colored paint. And I just take my finger and dip it in the paint. And go over the edges. And apparently I have white on my finger. So anyway, I'll do that later. But anyway, there's that. And then, um... I'll take a picture of it and show it to you when it's dry. I don't know if I like this part right here. Um, and I hope I don't screw it up. But Those colors pop through there. And you can take this thing if you want to make it more uniform. And then just clean it up. Look, <sighs> messing it up. I'm 
putting a new glove on. You can also use a paintbrush, like a small artist brush, or a foam, one of those little tiny foam brushes, and go back over any spots. And when it dries, you'll see, because the black paint is thinner, you'll see if you need to go touch up with some black paint. And that's just super simple and it'll be dry in no time. All right, so then you can take your, I don't even know, can you still see that? Hit it with your torch. But be careful with the black if it has started to dry because you don't want to burn your canvas. And I, I've done that. See, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm burning it. But it's, we're good. Because that black paint is so thin, the torch kind of... Oh, look. Well, that's actually copper coming through. So, anyway. Ooh. Torching is addictive. Like, I like it. I've been using that more and more lately instead of my heat gun. I used to be afraid of it. Okay, anyway, I'm not going to touch it anymore, but what's good about it is when it is dry, because it will be dry tomorrow, you can add over it, which would add a super 3D effect. Um, I don't like this. I need to stop messing with it. Because in reality... When it's dry, I could go back with black paint and clean up any edges that I don't like overflowing or where it strings across. Uh, anyway, okay, I'm not going to touch it anymore. <laughs> anyway, I hope that helped. This isn't the greatest, but it it's hard on a small canvas. It really is. Um, I think you really need at least like a 12 by 12 square. Um to be comfortable with moving stuff around and actually, you know, making something. But anyway, from different views, it looks different from every angle. It actually looks pretty cool from the angle you were seeing it at. And then that. All right, I love you, love you, love you. And let me know if this helped at all. And then I want to see what you've done with your resin. Love you. Bye.